In this video, I talk about influencing the path selection and uh, basically controlling and influencing your assignment. Uh, probably the first step you can do is to go to the parameters uh, choice tab. And you can look into these three options if these are applicable to your model. So avoid long detours. Uh, if you find that um, in the model many vehicles keep using very old, very long paths, that is just not realistic. Then you can probably uh, use this to completely remove those paths. Um, I find it useful, but um, just something to to check probably uh, when you run it for convergence and uh, you think the model has already found most of the paths, it's good to just do some checks to see <laughs> if vehicles actually meaningfully can use uh, maybe a long detour, especially if you have a congested network. Reject paths with too high total costs. Um, this is very useful, I think, maybe the most useful. Um, because if you use um, the limit number of paths per OD relations, this might, um, maybe it finds paths, if you have a lot of alternative paths, it might find paths in the first runs that vehicles wouldn't really use or take. And if you limit it to a, to a small number, they might not find those paths that vehicles actually take. So I would be careful with this. Only use when your model is quite specific and um, you know there are just too many paths available and it causes you technical issues and bugs. This reject paths is too high total cost. So I think this is useful um, because you still have those paths. The, um, and if it's just too long and too unrealistically long, you can just uh, use this to just re reject those. But you will still have, you still be able to to have them. So maybe it's better. But if you don't need to deal with this, probably just leave them. If your model works fine without uh, limiting anything. So once that's done, something important to know how Wizim um, calculates basically to generalize cost. Basically the generalized cost is, is like the total cost for that path that includes everything. For each vehicle type you can set up a different calculation. So in the cost coefficients for the vehicle type in the special type if you go there you can see these three numbers. So basically what it does this is the 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 calculation and these are the coefficient. So by default, <laughs> you only have this and the cost, it financial cost, the last one. So travel time is taken into account with a coefficient of one and the cost is as well. The very good thing about using one here is that if you add a cost later and also you use travel time, and if you want to take distance into account, if you uh, have uh, one here, that basically whatever you do, one second will be uh, one second extra travel time will be one second. So it will count uh, as one second since it is one. If it is two there, one extra second would count as two for that path, for the generalized cost. <laughs> If we use additional, if we add additional costs, you can very easily just put one, and then you will know if you add one as a extra charge, then you you know that that will act as a one second extra cost to the vehicles. So it is more like comparable. So if you have paths around one two thousand seconds, and then you you will feel how much you need to add uh, to balance uh, paths basically between vehicles. And again, distance, every one meter will be basically treated as one, if you have a one here. So that will act as like one second extra. Every single extra meter will be as an extra second in the cost. So that's why having one is useful. I hope it, it is understandable what I mean. 
So probably better if you if you just keep this as one if you don't need to change it. So the way we can calculate the generalized cost, uh, generalized cost for the path is that it multiplies basically the travel time with one. In this case, with one. So it is a thousand. If your travel time is a thousand seconds, it will be a thousand plus. What is the distance if it is a kilometer? That will be a thousand. So it will be two thousand. But there is zero here, so it will be zero. So we are at 1000 here yet. And then the cost. So if your road doesn't have a toll, doesn't have a, an extra surcharge or a cost per kilometer, that will be, there will be a zero here. So your path um, cost, generalized cost will be a thousand. And then if you have another path for the same OD pair, if that is a bit longer, but basically the only thing matters is the travel time then, since the distance is zero here. So there is no coefficient there. But if you want to take into account distance, because in your network vehicles um, decision impacted by distance as well, not just travel time, you should use that. You should put a one there or half, or it depends on how much you want the distance to be uh, to influence your uh, cost and then the cost so if there is zero on the other route then again um, it will be zero so again just your travel time will matter so basically if you have no costs extra cost tolls or any surcharges in your network then it will be the travel time as the main decision how to choose paths and you can also, so for example, in this case, when travel time is an influence, is the, the main um, element of your uh, generalized cost function, you can add like reduce speed areas, for example, to influence the choice because the slower they go, the more um, probably that they will take a longer route because that is basically faster. Also, for each link <clears throat> and connector, you can, if you go to the dynamic assignment uh, tab, so this is for the connectors, but also for links, you have the dynamic assignment tab. In older VZIMs, the arrangement is a bit different, but you have the same settings, basically. You can add three different costs. These influence the financial cost, what I showed you before. So, this one, this is the financial cost. And by default, it is set to one, so it influences your path search or choice, sorry. <laughs> so, if you go back here, you have three settings a cost, a surcharge one, and surcharge two. So, cost is per kilometer. So, this financial cost will be basically added. To that uh, generalized cost calculation if it is 10 meter long and you have a uh, thousand unit per kilometer the cost it will be 10 if it's 10 meter long surcharge one surcharge one is just a one-off charge basically it is not a per kilometer it doesn't matter how long your link is but what matters is surcharge 1 is weighted, so it is multiplied by this coefficient, the cost coefficient. So if your surcharge 1 is, let's say, 10, and this number 1 is, this number here, the coefficient is 1, then it's, it's just 10. It's just basically that path. If that path has that connector, that 10, 10 will be added to it. But if you have two here, 20 will be added. So it is weighted by this coefficient. There is surcharge number two. So this short surcharge has nothing to do with any of the coefficients. These, 
basically here you should have like a fourth row this is like a summary of all surcharge tools so even if you have zero here surcharge two is still added as a plus so if you have surcharge two here let's say 20 then if every path that has this uh, link in sorry this connector in 20 will be added and if you use one coefficient for example for travel time that 20 will mean basically an extra 20 second penalty for that path so with this you can basically control how many vehicles should go on this way and how many vehicles should go this way so if i add 20 second if i take it out from here and i add it here basically that will mean that all the paths here going through this link up here they will all have a 20 extra second with these settings with by having one here yeah okay so other ways to influence it so you should when you run the before you run before you run your model you should also close paths or turns that are impossible and no one does it and they can't even do it so like unrealistic ones the best way to deal with it is to have maybe like a, a, a node that covers that turn and then you can go to that node so if you open up the edges you create dynamic assignment graph then you will have all your nodes and you know that vehicles like no one uses for example like uh, that one because may make because maybe this is a construction or roadworks so you know that no one can go there so you just close it and again this update you can get rid of it if you uncheck these yeah so this way you can completely remove all path that has that edge in from the first run the last resort to control the assignment is to use vehicle root closures basically these are very versatile because regardless of the uh, of the node you can basically create um, basically whole path sections or i mean not path sections but a part of whole path so you can just look a certain path up that you know they just shouldn't do this the only problem with these root closures is that if a path that has this root closure is the only one available then they will use it and they will also use it in the first run if this is the shortest one that has no edge closure in it so just something to keep in mind if you want to use roots if you want to use root closures and you run the model uh, for convergence then in the first run vehicles we use this path but this is again quite helpful if you have a very tricky path that you know yeah i don't want vehicle to come up here and then turn maybe like that and, and then like that and i don't want that so you can just use these and you can also be smart with the nodes how you place nodes because you might be able to just place a node over a greater area and then basically you can just close the actual edge and then you can completely get rid of that uh, this path maybe or 
I don't know, or so did his edge, or something. So yeah, this is this is something to um, to keep in mind. I will be creating uh, videos with actual examples, so maybe roundabouts, um, roundabout one, but maybe two roundabouts next to each other, or some highway stretches, and then I show in in uh, example how to use these closures, how to change, how to use those costs and things like that. But this should give you an idea of, of what to do. So probably, but just from experience, the best is if you just stick to the surcharge tool and you just uh, maybe one or two turns or links, you can just add some cost to them and just leave those coefficient uh, as per default. Of course, if, if you have a special case that's different, but if you have just a simple dynamic assignment model, um, probably just better to stick to that um, that, that, that default setting and just use those and just first close all the edges that it makes no sense or for those turns they, they do nah. if those turn make no sense um, the last resort should be these root closures and just keep using those surcharge tools just keep in mind that surcharge one is um, can be weighted yeah okay thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the upcoming videos with some examples on these settings.